it's Oscar again. And today, one of the most important tools in our software, the real-time monitor. Sometimes it's hard to find the reason for particular uh, behavior of our machine. With this tool, you can easily diagnose the problem. You can precisely inspect the behavior of variables in the project, how they change in time or how they influence each other. And it's all delivered in a user-friendly graphic form. And it's also super easy to use. Today I will cover the basics, so how to launch the monitor, how to scale generated graphs, how to use cursors and their values, and also how to search for particular conditions and dependencies between variables in our project. So be ready to make some notes and let's jump into software. Okay, how to start the real-time monitor? The easiest way is to right-click on a variable and choose Wave Display option. Then the GXWorks project will be loaded to GXLogViewer. OK, and after some time we will see our variable here, so we can click Monitor Start. OK, we started monitoring of this variable, so let's add some another variable. Let's click here again, right, and wave display. Uh, we have to stop our monitor to add more variables, so let's use this time and add even multiple uh, variables. So let's set, let's choose two variables and add them uh, at the same time. Okay, if we have a ST program, we can even select the whole line uh, in the code and then all the variables that are in this line will be added uh, automatically to our real-time monitor. We can also add some values manually by label or by a direct address. In case of compact PLCs, we have to use uh, the addresses of registers here. Now I will show you some navigation options. Of course, we can stop our monitor. Uh, we can start it from the beginning but we can also use these three buttons here to pause, restart or clear uh, the screen. But the data will be kept so we can still restart uh, our monitor anytime, like here. OK. We can, all, of course, scale our data. In Y-axis, we can do this uh, automatically in two ways. First is auto scaling for the whole period of register data, and second one is the auto scaling only for the visible part of data. This is the second option. What about uh, time scale? We can use here the plus and minus buttons here, yeah. But we can also use uh, the mouse scroll, but we have to hold the control button on the keyboard and then we can use mouse scroll. Okay. We can also uh, change the vertical position and size of the graph with uh, these buttons here. We can also use mouse for this. We are also able uh, to choose the maximum and minimum value on y-axis uh, using our keyboard, so just putting exact numbers here. So I will choose some uh, values uh, dedicated for my PID and now let's try to catch the step response of my object. I will force the step response and let's collect some samples. OK, now let's investigate uh, this graph. The best option is to use cursors. We can use one or we can use multiple cursors uh, to observe two values at the same time. We can also uh, plug in the cursor labels to see the values. For the bigger uh, graphs, we can use move a red or blue cursor 
option. Just right click anywhere and we can move the cursor here. Of course, using two cursors, we can uh, calculate the difference between them in Y and uh, X axis. Uh, all of these values are available in the uh, bottom right corner of the screen. Sometimes just moving our cursor by hand, trying to find the particular spot in our signals, it's not precise enough and can be too time consuming. So good news, we have special function for this and it's called jump cursor. Okay, where we can find the jump cursor function? It's here. So, uh, we can choose the specific signal uh, just to jump to the part of data that meets the certain criteria. So, let's choose the first signal and let's look for the maximum value. We can jump to the next maximum value on the, or the previous. We can also, for example, look for the minimum value. Uh, of course, let's check this signal for minimum values. Okay, and when we will choose some signal that has many maximum and minimum values, like sinus, we can use the search list and we can see the whole table with maximum values of this particular signal. We can also use the combined uh, conditions. So we can use logical operator here and we can uh, combine some criteria for different signals and different uh, conditions for both of them to find the places in graphs that fulfill all of the conditions. Okay, the next function I want to show you needs to uh, require to uh, clear the graph. So now right click on some signal and we move to the real-time monitor setting. Okay, here we can go to monitor condition setting and we can first of all change the sampling time. So we don't have to use the sampling time of each scan of PLC. It can be for example 200 milliseconds because it's, it's enough for my PID. We can also use the triggers. Some, some of our registers uh, can be triggers and how does it work? Uh, after the trigger occur, we are only collecting the particular number of samples before we will stop our monitoring. In my case, it will be 50 samples. So let's start the monitor and it works like before, but at some point here we met the trigger. So from this time, we are only counting the 50 samples and it automatically stopped. Let's rescale this and we can also, this is important, export this data to text, uh, to text file. Uh, we have to stop our monitor first and now we can save as text file. Okay, let's call it log3, save. Okay. When we open this file, we will easily find the sample which was tri our trigger. We will find here also some basic data and we will find all the samples uh, from our record, including the last 50 samples uh, after the trigger occurred. So now you know how to use the real-time monitor, how to find and record the variables in the program, how to find the critical moments in your process and you even learned how to export this data for a later analysis, for example in MATLAB or any other software. So I think it will be enough for today. Thank you for watching and see you in the next episode. Bye!